often think about the early church and consider how bold they were, how courageous they were, how fearless they were. We consider these saints of old and we wish we could be more like them. Now, John 20 gives us a good picture of the condition of the early church, even after the resurrection of Christ. They had heard the report of Jesus' resurrection. And what were the early Christians doing? Most likely embracing all the language we have in the church today. Scarcity language. We don't have enough language. We can't witness. We can't go out of the church. We can't love our neighbor language. We have environments too dangerous type of language. Even though Jesus had been raised from the dead. They were in a room behind closed doors, locked in from the inside for fear of the Jews. They were hiding in cowardly self-preservation. They were scared. They were scared to live, scared to die, scared to go out, scared to come in, scared to move, scared to breathe. Fear dominated them too, just like it, it can dominate our lives. But then Jesus comes to them on the eve of the resurrection. He doesn't ask for permission. He doesn't knock on the door. He comes right into their midst. And his first words to his frightened disciples are a double dose of peace. Peace be with you, he says. He delivers to them the wholeness of the kingdom, the completeness of what his death and resurrection accomplished for them. He blasted away every option to be scared of sin or death or the demons any longer, to be scared of people or to be scared of circumstances with his own incomprehensible comprehensive peace that he earned by his own blessed wounds in his hands and side. Those disciples, yeah, they had physically been around Jesus through his earthly ministry. They saw him betrayed. They saw him led to a cross. And then they would see him raised from the grave. But notice they had no true peace until Jesus came into the middle of that room and delivered it to them. Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit as he breathes on them. He says to his chosen apostles, whatever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whatever sins you retain, they are retained. His word and spirit gave these scared, weak disciples just a few seconds before the awesome, death-defeating, life-giving ministry of the forgiveness of sins. He entrusts that with them. And then these guys are bold. Then these guys are courageous because their sins are forgiven. Then these guys can go find Thomas and bring him to the place where Jesus was hanging out, where his word and his gifts are busting loose in their midst. So on a sunny morning, Jesus hits us with his divine speaking and his divine acting. It's kind of like when you're in a hurry and you're trying to open up the salad bag you take a shortcut and use your bare hands, and it just bursts forth all over through the kitchen. Lettuce everywhere. Well, the church is the place where the forgiveness of sins breaks forth. Busts into your life. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, God's peace be with you in Jesus.